In today's video, it's back to bourbon. We are going to make a Texas sour. Welcome to Thirsty Thursday, I'm Mark, and this is the Average Meat Channel. And in today's video, we are going to make a Texas sour. Uh, when I found this, it was actually called a New York sour. But we are using a Texas bourbon, so how can I call something New York when we're using a good Texas bourbon? So I'm calling this one the Texas Sour. So what are we gonna be using for this cocktail? We are going to use Texas bourbon. We're going to use, yeah, believe it or not, maple syrup. We are going to use fresh squeezed lemon juice. And finally, Pinot Noir. Why am I using a dry wine in a cocktail? Well, you'll see in just a moment. So let's get things started. We're going to begin with our shaker full of ice. We are going to strain this drink. So I'm using my strainer shaker. We're gonna be squeezing a little bit of lemon. And I've got something kind of different this time around, I'm using a round ice cube. We'll be talking about that one in just a bit as well. As a matter of fact, I actually have a, a second tumbler because as I'm uh, jibber jabbering, we might get a little bit of melt in there and I'd rather we not have a whole lot of melting in this cocktail. The reason you would use a spherical or a round ice cube is because the round shape, the spherical shape, has the least amount of surface area. So you get maximum cooling with the least amount of melting or dilution of the beverage. Now, in a lot of cocktails, we want to have that melt. For example, when we do the, um, the tiki drinks, we often will use crushed ice in there because the melting of the ice actually contributes to the mixture and, and uh, the taste of the cocktail. When we're making something like this uh, bourbon cocktail, the bourbon sour, we really don't want to have too much of that dilution. So I think in another video, we'll talk all about the round ice cubes and how I make them. But for today, we're just gonna understand that I have a round ice cube and we'll move forward. So we're gonna start things off with two ounces of bourbon. I'm using Treaty Oak, which is a Texas bourbon. And we're gonna use a full two ounces of that. Boy, that's almost killing my bourbon. I've got some, some more, but not this brand. Then we're going to use one ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice. And I will tell you that um, I did use this lemon. I took a garnish off it, and I'm a little concerned that this lemon is just going to is going to collapse. So if that happens, I think it might. I may take a, a little break here and just get a fresh lemon. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little concerned about what's going to happen here. So we're going to take a, a magic lemon break and do what I should have done in the first place. I'll be right back. And here we go. So we have a nice fresh lemon. And oh yeah, that's what we're looking for. And that will give us our ounce of juice. That's just about perfect. We've got an ounce of lemon juice. We'll push this aside for a moment. And please remember, I do have that garnish. We'll get to that in just a little bit. And then we're going to use one half ounce of pure maple syrup. Oh, I gotta take the little plastic cover off that. So one half ounce of maple syrup. 
and that's really all the sweetener in this. So this is going to be, uh, yeah, I mean, I've made it before. I did sample this one, so I can tell you it is quite a tasty cocktail. But I think without that sweetener, without that sugar, we would uh, not be happy with this drink. So now we're gonna shake it up. I'm gonna condense my 45 seconds of shaking into about five. Oh man. Okay, so what I did is I just dumped some of the water out here. So we have, I'm gonna show it to you. It's just a, oh man, it's hard to hold on to. A nice cylindrical ice cube. There you go. And my hands are soaking wet. All right, and now the fun part where we get to pour that floater onto the cocktail. Now, this takes a little bit of practice. It's not a difficult thing to do, but it does take a little bit of practice. Now remember, we're using a dry red wine of your choice. This is a Pinot Noir. We're gonna pour it over the back of the spoon and just let that go in a lot of different directions. And with any luck, we have a good enough hand that that's just gonna float on top. And look at that. Isn't that an attractive cocktail? So I'm gonna get a quick picture before that all blends together, and we'll give it a taste test. So there we go. Now, anytime you wanna add a floater, that spoon trick is really helpful to know. All you do is pour it over the back of the spoon. Ideally, you want the uh, beverage to go in all directions. When you're making something like a Mai Tai, it makes a really attractive drink when you're able to float that dark rum on the top. In this case, a little bit different when you're using a bourbon sour with a dry red wine. It is a real attractive drink. It especially looks good with that round ice cube. So the round ice cube, I guess that is kind of a um, oxymoron round cube, right? <laughs> so a round chunk of ice but it makes it look really attractive. So I'm gonna drink it two ways. I'm gonna take a sip of this and I'm concerned that I might just get uh, the wine on the first sip. So then I'm gonna stir it a little bit. Oh, it tastes good. But ideally you will put a um, mixing straw or something in, but you see the problem is it muddies things up. And it really is not nearly as attractive, but ideally the presentation, the floater is about presentation. But when you drink it, when you taste it, you really want to have all of the flavors. Oh yeah, that's so much better. Boy, you would think with all that bourbon, this would be an overpowering cocktail. This would taste like a shot. It would taste medicine-y, but it really doesn't. I'll tell you, that syrup does really make all the difference. Certainly you taste the lemon, but the lemon would make it sour. And that's why this is a bourbon sour. Uh, but if all you went with was lemon and bourbon, oh, that would make, you know, kind of your mouth pucker. So you need to add that sweetness and that maple flavor. Wow, is that good. And the, uh, the wine, it, it, we just use a tiny little bit. There's not that much. A lot of it is about presentation, but it does add just a little bit of taste, you know, that little bit of dryness. The whole thing comes together to make darn near the perfect cocktail. If you're not a bourbon drinker and you kind of want to try something, but you don't want to have, you know, a straight shot or something that you think is going to be too intense or too overpowering. I think this might be a cocktail for you. This could be a great introduction to a bourbon mixed drink. This is really a delicious cocktail. This is going to move to the top of my list. It's a different type of drink. 
This would be something that I think you would go in, you'd order at the bar. Don't be afraid of mixing a wine with bourbon. You know, it seems sort of like you're softening uh, the concept of having a bourbon drink, but not at all. There's just a really great blend to it, and I think you're gonna like it. As always, I ask that you like and share the video. Please join me next Thursday for the next Thirsty Thursday video. And you might as well drop it on the channel and see what we do for the rest of the week. We do have a good time here. Um, but like and share the video, subscribe, leave your comments down below, and I'll see you back here next week.